Language models are tools that were developed in order to accomplish natural language processing tasks like summarization, translation, or sentiment analysis. More generally, these tasks can be formulated as transforming a text into another text, which offers a large diversity of possible tasks. All of these tasks can be done using language models. However, at first, the model doesn't know what task we want it to achieve. For example, let's suppose we want to carry out the following task. Output emojis that best describe a given movie name. If we only give the model a movie name, it of course cannot know that we want it to output emojis that describe this movie. It will generate the text that is the most likely to follow the words Star Wars. That's exactly what we expect of it as a language model. We thus need to describe to the model what we want it to achieve. We do that using what's called prompting. Going back to the definition of a language model, we know that it's an algorithm which takes as input a context of words and outputs the most likely word to come after this context. So in order to influence the output of the model, we can play with the input we give it. We will thus condition the model in order to make it achieve the task we want. That's what prompting is about. The first method to condition the model, the fastest, is to simply describe in plain natural language what we want it to do. For our example, we tell it, convert this movie title into three emojis. Then we ask it to do it with Star Wars. And it works. This method is very useful, but we may encounter tasks which are not easily described by a sentence. For example, let's consider the task tell if a given object is usually found indoor or outdoor. If we apply the first method, the model achieves the task, but we can't control the format of the output. In order to do this, we can leverage a second prompting method, which consists of simply giving the model a few examples of objects with their corresponding outputs. The model, given these examples, will understand the task to do. This method, which involves giving examples of how to achieve a task on a few inputs, is often used and can be combined with the first method we saw. While not a lot of prompt engineering was necessary for these two simple tasks, it is often necessary to spend some time designing a right prompt, the input we give the model, which best allows it to undertake the task to accomplish. This is not easy because the model is very sensible to this prompt and the way it is sensible to this prompt is not intuitive. Here, we want to translate sentences in a newly crafted language. As we can see, we have to repeat in the second sentence that the sentences must be translated in this invented language. If we don't, the model forgets the first command and simply translates the sentences in French. Another current limit of prompting is the size of the prompts we can give the model. This size is fixed of about 3000 words for models like GPT-3. This is quite limiting for some reasons. First, this limits the number of examples we can give the model in a single prompt, if we choose to use the second prompting technique. Another limitation of this fixed size context is the use of model language in applications like dialog. The model is able to attend to only a part of the conversation we've had with it. This is also a problem for document analysis because it limits the size of the document we can give the model to analyze. More research is being done to increase this context length. To finish, here are examples of prompts we can give ChatGPT in order to make it achieve different useful tasks. For example, we can use ChatGPT to help us learn by prompting it to ask us questions about a lesson we want to learn. With the same style, it can help us anticipate questions about a given subject. Large language models like ChatGPT are also efficient to summarize long text in a few words or, on the contrary, redact a text from simple notes.